ഹലോ എവറി വൺ വെൽക്കം ടു അനാദർ സെഷൻ ഓൺ വേസ് വിത്ത് വേർഡ്സ് ഇൻ ദ സെഷൻ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡിസ്കസ് അബൌട്ട് ദി സെക്കൻഡ് സ്റ്റാൻസ ഓഫ് ദി പോം ഓട്ട് ടു ഓട്ടം ഓക്കെ യു ഓൾ ആർ ഫാമിലിയർ വിത്ത് ദ സ്റ്റാൻസ യു നോ യു ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് തേർ ഇൻ യുവർ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് ബുക്ക് സു ദർ ഇസ് നോ നീഡ് ടു വേസ്റ്റ് ടൈം ഓൺ ദാറ്റ് യെറ്റ് യു നോ ഐ തോട്ട് ലൈക്ക് ഐ വിൽ ഗിവ് യു നോ ദിസ് കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് നോ സ്ക്രീൻഷോട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി സെക്കൻഡ് സ്റ്റാൻസ ഓക്കെ സോ വിൽ ഡിസ്കസ് ഇറ്റ് ലൈൻ ബൈ ലൈൻ ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ലൈൻ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബി ലൈക്ക് ദിസ് no who hath not seen the oft amid thy store you know oft terms often you are seen you are actually seen often very often you are all or, or, you know you are often noticed by others okay uh, in the middle of your bounty so what exactly are the areas where you know we encounter or we meet or we notice the presence of autumn amidst us okay so that is what is the poet trying to explain through the stanza okay you can see that there are four areas or four occasions which are quite very familiar to us through which autumn exposes itself okay autumn is trying to expose itself through four different areas or or at four different areas it's like something who is there with me with us you know somebody who is there with us okay so that is a feeling that we actually get when we read the stanza and which are the four areas one is at the granary floor okay secondly you can see that you know granary floor is something that is very common very familiar thing during that particular time now you know that the poet lived in the 19th century in the first half of the 19th century and during that particular time granary floor is the one of the most familiar sport of their life okay the second place where they meet autumn is you know in the half reaped furrow okay i'll explain to you if you are a row w furrow you know there you can meet again furrow is like you know in the field that is also another familiar face uh, place uh, for the people of the uh, early uh, victorian period or you can say the late romantic period okay in the first half of the uh, 19th century fields are like a kind of a very familiar place for them for the people okay so there you can meet autumn then thirdly you can see that you know whenever you meet a gleaner okay there you experience the presence of autumn and fourthly at you know a cider press or you can say by a cider press you can meet uh the presence of autumn in your life so these are the four possible areas where like you know it's every possibility for you to meet autumn okay that is described by the poet okay autumn is somebody uh, or something that is quite very familiar uh, to us or you can say it's something very close to us that is what the poet is trying to tell us okay so in the first line who hath not seen thee oft amid thy store no amid thy store in the middle of your bounty you know in 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 the middle of your bounty in the middle of your richness who hasn't noticed you often which means you're often seen you're often noticed by others in the middle of your bounty okay and next answer sometimes whoever seeks abroad may find you know if at all you are not in a position or somebody who is not in a position to experience autumn in their life you know the best thing and they try to seek autumn in something else or abroad means in an unfamiliar place or outside place okay these are the possible locations where they are going to meet autumn okay so anybody or whoever tries to seek or search for you you means here autumn abroad or it means like abroad means here in an unfamiliar place or an outside place okay may find you you means autumn in their very own you know in, in their very own granary floor that is the first place okay so these sitting careless on a granary floor granary floor granary means a place where grain is stored okay so that's like one of the most common or a familiar place there you can see the presence of autumn then secondly the place actually needs no conscious thought like you know which a granary floor you know so uh, somebody who is trying to seek autumn okay in abroad means an unfamiliar place they will see autumn firstly in their own granary floor in their own you know a place where like you know they store their grains okay so you are sitting carelessly on the granary floor sitting the sitting carelessly on the granary floor and next line 
thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind okay and your hair is lifted by the winnowing wind winnowing one that separates you know winnowing is a process uh, where you know you can see like you know uh, the the chaff is separated from the grain which is a quite a very familiar scene during that particular time okay so in that winnowing wind your hair whose hair autumn okay autumn's hair is lifted okay in that soft uh, winnowing wind okay so again harvester is a familiar scene in autumn so if you have seen a harvester you have seen autumn itself you know that is the message of the poet so autumn is personified as a winnower here okay one who separates the um, uh, shaft from the grain okay then the next line or on a half reaped furrow sound asleep drowsed with the fume of poppies while thy hook spares the next swath and all its twined flowers or you can say the first place where you actually meet uh, the autumn is granary floor and now he says like in the second place where you can meet the uh, autumn is you know uh, is like you know in in a half reaped furrow furrow means it's like a, a miniature tr miniature trench okay a small kind of a, a trench like a thing so there half reaped furrow like you know or autumn is also visible as one uh, one in a sound sleep okay on a half reaped furrow in the middle of the work in the middle of the work the reaper fell asleep okay because of exhaustion or you can say that you know with the or with the order of the poppies the smell of the poppies that has resulted in the that sleep of uh, the uh, reaper okay so anyone might also find you asleep in the fields or on uh, an incompletely harvested crop row okay fatigued because of the sleep Uh, induced by the aroma or means the you know, smell of poppies okay so that is a meaning drowsed with means a sleep having induced by hook means it actually refers to a scythe 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 is like it's a kind of a tool used for cutting crops especially those grass in the corn you know grass or you can say in corn or corn you know that does in fact been uh, used a uh, hook i uh, means it is um, uh, uh, cut uh, by uh, you know side okay so in that case you know if you fall asleep in the middle of your work in that case your side would be uh, ease to the side you know and hence the next set of a uh, twisted flowers would be said from be being cut you know so that uh, it would be uh, cast to the side you know you cannot uh, take care of the uh, uh, the the uh, the crops because or you can say yeah the flowers okay uh, the twisted flowers here twisted flowers means the flowers of the poppies entangled with corn okay which is like a very familiar or a common thing during that particular period and uh, so it's it's like you know you can see when the poet tries to give us the picture of a tired reaper you know he is giving a very human picture of uh, you know picture uh, to us human picture of you know a reaper uh, to us okay and so here you can see that you know he, uh, again uh, through that depiction of that sound sleep uh, by the the reaper in the middle of his work and you know and the hook his hook hook means you know that particular tool that has been used pairs the next swath swath means a set of you know uh, uh, means handful of uh, flowers that was about to cut by the reaper okay so that is in fact being spared you know uh, because of that sleep okay so that is the idea that is represented in the next three lines then and sometimes like a gleaner thou dost keep uh, thy uh, st keep steady thy laden head across a brook okay so here you can see the autumn is uh, can also be seen in the form of a gleaner 
okay who collects grains from the field you know that is a person and when the crops are being after the crops are being have been reaped you know you uh, this particular gleaner collects the grains from the field and this gleaner is walking steadily with the weight of the grains upon her head you know while crossing a, a stream you know here, here a brook brook means basically a stream so like this a laborer who has been observant you know very careful uh, you know while watching uh, sorry uh, observant uh, while you know cross the while crossing the stream with your full uh, heavy head of you know uh, fruits and leaves uh, while crossing the brook she chooses her steps cautiously over the stones of the brook and keeps her head steady otherwise you know the whole day's labor it will be washed away by the current or you can say by the uh, water uh, the the current of the river okay so uh, that likewise you know in that gleaner who is making a very cautious step there you can see whom the autumn and finally autumn can be seen or by a cider press with a patient look thou watchest the last oozings hour by hour so finally autumn can be seen working at her cider press okay cider press uh, means like to crush the ripe apples she sits by the cider press <coughs> she sits by the cider press and watches patiently the apple juice flowing out of the press drop by drop or you can say that at this time the autumn is patiently uh you know uh, looking at the machine that juices the apples for cider okay noting how the juice and the pulp slowly ooze out of the machine over the course of many hours cider is basically the apple wine okay so here you can see an unhackneyed picture of the uh, of this particular scene is being depicted okay so that is all about you know uh, this particular stanza i mean the second stanza